What's up, my wizards? Dev from the place with the decks. Usually today it's spoilers, which is really cool. I've been trying to find the uh, the best day to catch everyone up on Battle for Zendikar spoilers, and today, right in the middle of Worlds 2015, Wizards released like 20 some odd spoilers. So let's go ahead and run through these pretty quickly and get a general impression of how we feel about them. Let's start. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. We already knew full art lands were coming, but wizards went ahead and spoiled what they're going to look like. That's pretty cool. Um, definitely my favorite is that mountain, followed probably by the forest. How do you feel about it? That mountain, though. I, that's definitely my favorite. Now into the real cards. We'll talk more about lands later, don't worry. Um, I was going to go down the list here pretty quickly, so keep up, because I think some of these cards are actually really, really important. Starting with Gideon's Reproach. I've built a few white decks lately, or decks that had white in them, and I find myself really wanting exactly an option just like this, you know? Very, very low on the curve, instant speed, and kills almost every relevant creature in the format right now. Siege Rhino, a couple of dragons, you know? Of course, I think the format looks like, with some of these spoilers, it's going to get bigger in the power and toughness and casting cost department. So we'll see how important this card is, but early game, it's going to be good every time. Really like this is good premium, I would say, white removal. Here's a piece of budget green goodness. At least I think it's going to be budget. This is Oren Reef Hydra. Um, yeah, cute, I would say. I mean, just doesn't look like it's going to be any more than 50 cents to me, but you know, your budget mono green players, uh, your budget rampers are going to like something like this all day. So, you know, I like it. I think it's cool, but I don't think it's going anywhere. Here's another interesting card, Radiant Flames. We get a look at Converge. This is actually pretty cool. You know, we got a lot of colorless creatures in the format, but it still matters what colors you're playing, you know. Sort of pushes the idea of a multicolored deck, which we knew we were going to get, you know, once um, the Theros and M15 rotate out. Definitely more of a focus on multicolor, but this is where we definitely see it. Now, I don't think that this really replaces, even if you pay three different colors of mana, I don't know that this really replaces something like Anger of the Gods in the format, but... That being said, you know, with Anger, you sort of have to be heavy in the red department. With this, you can be, you can put this in Jund or Teemer, a couple of different things. You know, this goes in Grixis, I would say, even though it is sorcery speed. That's an issue, but it's mass removal for what it's worth. I mean, you can feel a lot of different ways about this card, but at the end of the day, I think it probably will see play in Standard. Speaking of probably will see play in Standard, this is Ruinous Path. Ruinous Path is... Probably really good. Again, not necessarily a replacement for an already staple card in the format, Hero's Downfall. Even more so uh, a staple than Anger of the Gods by a lot. Um, but this, you know, has the same basic text, Destroy Target Creature or Planeswalker, but it's sorcery speed. And that's really not made up for by the seven mana awaken cost. Now, you do get to, you know, kill a guy and put out a 4-4 if you pay the seven for it. But seven mana is an awful lot. But again... The format might be getting much bigger. We see a lot of high CMC cards in these spoilers, and it's it's a little freaky, but I, I like when, when spells cost this much. It's going to slow down the format a little bit, and we're all just going to be playing Crazy Bombs. And that's a fun way to play Magic, by the way. So I'm not really sure if that's how the format's going to definitely shape out, but I think Ruinous Path, one way or the other, is again going to see standard play. A card doesn't have text like that and not see play. Good card. Here's, I love this name, here's Omnath, Locus of Rage. <laughs> yeah, a card like this is a pretty attractive card, yes, but with something like Dragonlord of Tarka in the format, which costs the same CMC and the same colors, and is just a much better card, all things considered. I do like the, you know, whenever it or an elemental dies, the three damage, that's, that's kind of cool. I just don't know if it's as broken as it looks at first glance, especially, again, this is... A Targa outclasses this. Decks like this are going to play a Targa over this. Here's Defiant Bloodlord. This will be pretty quick. I'll, pretty, I'll, I'll pass on this card. This, again, looks like a pretty, just a big mana, 50 cents rare. And some people, some players, I'm sure, will like this. This looks pretty interesting, like Commander, you know. But I'm just not really feeling it for most formats. <laughs> Here's Rolling Thunder, a reprint from, I believe, Tempest. My, like, my friends played this card against me when I first started playing Magic, it seems like. This is a really old card. I'm glad it came back, too. This is a limited all-star. Not sure if it's going to see standard play, but again, depending on how big the format gets, you know. Against, against Aggro, you can take out, like, three other guys. Yeah, reliably if in a ramp deck, but again, I just I'm not seeing it. we have something like Crater's Claws in the format, and I even like Ravaging Blaze, but I don't I don't know if I like it more than this. That's that's kind of a toss up. But Rolling Thunder being in sorcery speed is just probably Ravaging Blaze is better. <laughs> all things considered, I just I'm not sure I'm a big fan of Rolling Thunder nowadays. Although I remember this being an all star card like way back in the day. I just don't think it is anymore. Here's Veteran War Leader. Um, a lot of people freaking out about this, especially considering the return of allies. 
um, marked by this card. When I, I was never much of an ally player, but I do um, like the theme of it. I, I like the idea of it. I know a lot of players love allies, especially now in Commander, allies is a big thing, and this is very good for that deck. Um, we'll have to wait and see what we get for allies before I'm sold on the allies deck. I'm sure that we'll make the budget allies deck, you know, that's, I'm sure it'll be fun, too. Um, but this guy, I think that he's got potential. We'll have to wait and see, though. I'm sort of tempering my uh, judgment on this guy. I can quickly tell you about Sheer Drop. This is solid limited white removal and nothing else. This was the first look that we got at Awaken. And, you know, it gets kind of a two-for-one if you Awaken. That that's, seems fine, but I'm just not really seeing any standard play for a card like this. Here's Retreat to Kazandu. A lot of people are, um, that's a dumb name, by the way. Um, a lot of people are freaking out about this card. I'm not really sure... Why? I'm not, I'm not totally seeing it, you know, and people are saying Hardened Scales, but, you know, you spend your first turn playing Hardened Scales, you spend your third turn playing this, and it's like you, you spent two crucial turns playing enchantments that don't affect the board when you play them, you know, I'm just not a, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Here's Avenger of Zendikar, probably the cutest card in the spoilers. It is cool to get a bunch of plants, I mean, presumably you can get, you know, five to seven, the full seven, um, plants out of this, and then as soon as you play another land, they're all, you know, one-twos. So, I, I guess that there are some applications, but I just see this being easily outclassed by everything else at the seven mana slot. All right, easily the dumbest name in like a couple of sets. This is Hero of Goma Fada. I think I'm getting that right. Goma Fada, which is just Goose Flava. <laughs> That's a really dumb name. Um, yet another ally, by the way. It seems like there's a lot of ally hate here, but I just, I, I say meh. To this card, you know, that, like the whole point of playing allies is you don't play like five minute dudes, you know, it's maybe unlimited, but I'm not a big fan. Here is Felidar Club. It's, I guess it's cute, you know, I guess the card's okay. We just saw something in Magic Origins that's like when it enters the battlefield, distorted enchantment. This is Sacrifice of Distorted Enchantment. The first thing I thought was Demonic Pact. I don't know about you guys, but that's it's definitely an interesting control card for you know, in that deck. But eh, aside from that, I'm just, I don't know, maybe you'll see some play in sideboards depending on what enchantments are popular. But we'll have to see. Here is Guardian of Tazim. The only card spoiled on my birthday, by the way. But um, that being said, I actually have a certain affinity for this card, you know. Um, five mana, four, five flyer is not terrible stats right off the bat. Plus, you know, the landfall is fine, I guess. I'm just, you know, I'm not entirely sold on the card. Don't get me wrong. It'll probably end up being, you know, 50 cents, one of those. But I think the card has some amount of power to it, you know. I'm, I don't mind it at all, actually. In a way, it's removal, although I think Icefall Region is probably just way better than this card. Um, especially with all the dragon interactions, like Sylvangar Scorn that we have in the format. But aside from that, I just, I think it's a solid budget option for some decks. I think it's really cool. You play on an island, you get to, to ice the creature for a turn. That's kind of cool. Um, I just think there's a lot of interesting interesting things about the card, but, you know, that said, at the end of the day, probably no standard play. I'm working my way into the Eldrazi here. I was going to save all of them for last and go over them quickly, but before I do that, let's talk about my favorite card uh, that's been spoiled so far, and I, I can't believe I'm saying that because I'm usually, I usually, for whatever reason, I'm just never excited about Gideon, you know, although I really, I really, really like the Gideon from Origins, don't get me wrong, um, but this is, to me, this is the best Gideon um, ever printed, and it's probably... One of the best White Planeswalkers ever, um, next to maybe one of the iterations of Elspeth. But this is a, a very good replacement for Elspeth. It's just, this, this card I'm super giddy about. This is Gideon, ally of Zendikar, and he's crazy. Like every, every single thing he does, I mean, a four mana, five, five, indestructible that doesn't take damage, basically. That's his first ability. Um, he protects himself well, not only by becoming indestructible, but because he can put out blockers, you know, that's always something to look for in a Planeswalker. And that ultimate, he can ultimate him right when he hits the board. Like, that's something we have never seen. If I'm, if I'm judging correctly, that's something we've never seen. You can just immediately ultimate him and get an emblem. All your dudes get plus one, plus one. Um, and that's not even like an enchantment. Like, it's, it's in, you can't get rid of the emblem, you know? It's not like an honor of the pure or something like that. Um, this, I think this is just insane. This card is, is absolutely nuts. I, this is going to be at the top of the curve in Soldiers and other mono white decks, and even, I, I venture to say, two and three color decks. You know, I can see this obviously in Boros, um, and even like Naya. I've been really excited to build Naya, and this card makes me even more excited to build that deck. This card is unfreaking believable. I would say it's probably the absolute best card spoiled um, so far for BFZ, and I. I just, I can't go on and on about this card enough. I can't praise it enough. I'm really, really looking forward to playing this thing. It looks absolutely bonkers to me. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Into the Eldrazi here, which we've got an awful lot of. I like what they've done, you know. They've played, uh, they've used smaller 
Eldrazi this time around, which I think is just really cool and a couple of interesting abilities. Um, we'll start off with Dominator drawing one of the early cards spoiled. Um, I actually think, especially in Limited, this is a fairly good card, and Ingest is a really interesting ability, especially flavor-wise. I mean, Ingest is kind of gross. Like, you're just eating the top card of the library. Um, and it goes into Exile. So I think that actually has interesting applications, you know, your sort of aggro mill decks, and gets around the usual problem with mill in that, you know, there's a lot of decks built around their graveyards in this format, and we have things like Den Protector and Haven of the Spirit Dragon, so this just exiles it, you never have to deal with it again, that's pretty awesome. Here's Forerunner of Slaughter, something that I'm pretty excited about, actually. This is one of my favorite Eldrazi spoils so far, low on the curve. I think this could be an aggro staple, depending on, you know, how important these colors are for aggro decks, which is fairly easy to say that they'll be important colors, although we haven't seen a really good Rakdos aggro deck in quite some time now, uh, since Cackler was in the format. Remember that, guys? Uh, but, really miss Rakdos Cackler. But, in any case, yeah, this is quite good. Two mana, three power, can give other things haste, including itself, by the way, if you just pay an extra mana for it. You've still got a three mana, three power haste guy. Always a good deal. Always a good deal. And, has value past that first turn, gives other dudes haste. I mean, there's just nothing bad about this card. It's really good. Here's Mist Intruder, which I just, I don't think it's very good, but I have, a, I have an interesting, I have an affinity for this card. I just, I really like the flavor of it. I really like the design of it. It's cool that something like this exists. It really doesn't do much, you know, all things considered, but I just think it's interesting. I, I do. I, I think it's cool, and I'm glad it exists. That's all I can say. This is Kuzilex Chandler. Um, not a fan. You know, I'll we'll probably move on here. This is a pretty bland card, right? Speaking of bland cards, this is Eldrazi Devastator. Um, although I will say one thing about this. Cards like this, the presence of cards like this, um, show that they expect us to get to 8 mana in limited. You know? So there's probably going to be some help in this set along those lines. Um, we, we've seen, I'll get to those Eldrazi that help us out with that in a second. Um, but yeah, uh, this means that we'll probably be expected to easily get to that amount of mana. Um, in, in limited environments, so God knows what's going to happen in standard, you know. But aside from that, pretty pretty bland, but if you can get to 8 mana in your sealed pool, that's a good card. 8, you know, 8, 9 trample, yeah, I'd play that all day. This is Barrage Tyrant, which there really isn't much buzz about, and I don't think it's like super like standard playable or anything. 5 mana is very prohibitive, but I do like the, the ability to not have to tap him, by the way, to just fling any of our other dudes at a creature or a player. That's All of that is kind of interesting text, you know? Here's Incubator Drone. Now, in limited environments, this is going to be one of the things that helps us get to those higher mana amounts. Um, and we see a couple of Eldrazi. I'll get to the insane one um, next, but this is sort of the introduction to that concept. When this comes into play, make a guy, that guy can sack for a mana. I think we're, we're probably going to see a few of those, and at least one of them, the next one, is going to be important in standard, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Blight Herder. Blight Herder uh, looks pretty insane to me, to be honest. As long as Delve is in the format, this card is absolutely bonkers, right? I mean, five mana, four, five aren't bad. That's not bad stats on itself, uh, on its own. But then you get three, one, one. So we're, we're paying five mana for seven power, split amongst four guys, and three of those guys can sack for more mana. Like, if you can get the two cards out of, if you can pluck those two cards out of Exile, uh, that's just absolutely insane, you know? And they're playing Delve. You're going to see a lot of that. There's probably going to be a lot of Eldrazi strategies. Now, obviously, if we're playing Eldrazi, we have cards that have Ingest, so it makes it pretty easy to, to put cards in Exile for them. I just, I don't see really any downside to this. There's going to be a lot of times where you're able to pluck those two cards out of Exile and get seven, again, seven power for five mana, split amongst four dudes, and three of those guys do something awesome. So I think the Blightcaster might not be a format staple, but it is It is worth saying, too, that it's colorless. You can pay any mana for it. So we'll have to wait and see. I think this could be a very, very impactful card. Here's Titan's Presence. I counted among the Eldrazi cards, sort of. Um, but I, I do think this will probably see play in standard all day, you know. If, especially with the next card. I mean, we see a 10 mana Eldrazi um, that we have seen before. A <laughs> familiar face. Um, and so, you know, if we were able to reveal something like that, for instance, or any of the Eldrazi that costs a lot of mana, then this is almost a guaranteed, don't have to pay colored mana for it, exile. Like, the card is absolutely nuts looking to me. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. I know that having to reveal 
an Eldrazi is is kind of lame. I mean, having to have an Eldrazi in your hand, but that's what people said about the dragon-based cards. You know, Sylngar Scorn, Draconic Roar, and now those are format staples. So, I mean, and that's with people playing, you know, six to eight dragons in a deck. So, I can imagine people playing, you know, the same number, six to eight Eldrazi in a deck, and suddenly cards like this are just insanely good removal. That doesn't cost you colored mana. Like, this, this is good. I'm going to hype this a little, because I think it's really good. I won't let you finish, but this, I'm gonna, I just said I'm going to hype this a little. This, everyone's going to hype a lot. This is Ulamog. Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger, his name is. Yeah, he's back. He's finally back. Everyone's like, where's Ulamog and the rest of the Eldrazi? This, he's back, and he's like, better than ever. When you cast him, not when he enters the battlefield, just when you cast when he goes on the stack, um, exile two guys. <laughs> That's crazy. Exile two Permanence, by the way, not guys, permanence. So that's pretty insane right there, I would say. Um, and then he's indestructible, a 10 mana, 10 10 indestructible that you just can't do anything about. And then, and then, and then, I see, I see, when it attacks, right, they mill 20. They don't even mill 20, they exile the top 20. That's not even when it does combat damage, that's just when it swings in for the attack at all. <laughs> so, there's just so many crazy things about this card. And I know we're losing Devotion and Nykthos and Voyaging Seder, or Elvish Mystic, Sylvan Karyat, and a lot of our ramp, but we're going to get something. If Wizards expects us to cast this 10 mana thing, and you know they do, this is supposed to be an important card in the format, almost certainly. So if they expect us to do that, we will get some, some ramp options that that work. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost sure of it. Um, and we've got some things, you know, Animist Awakening and some some other important creatures, Whisper of the Wilds, Leaf Gilder, Rattleclaw Mystic, but we just don't have all the pieces we need, but we will. We absolutely will, and Ulamog will be an important card in the format. There's going to be a deck that's like Ugin and Ulamog and some of these other Eldrazi that don't cost anything. Like, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a really fun deck, and it's probably going to cost a jillion dollars, but that's for another day. We'll have to wait and see. Ulamog is Probably the card everyone is most hyped for. I'm pretty sure I can safely say that, although I'm most hyped for Gideon all day. Gideon's insane. Um, and on that note, I have a couple of more things to talk about before I'm out. I do want to bring up um, Hedron Archive. I'm not really sure where to put this. If I were to rank it, I think that it looks pretty underwhelming. Four mana, generates two when you tap it, and you can, you know, get two cards out of it, you know. Um, this looks unimpressive, but might be a piece for certain decks. You know, I was just talking about we don't have the ramp that we need to get to 10 mana in, you know, this, this upcoming format. But this might be an important piece for the Eldrazi decks to play, or decks that want to go really, really high up on the curve. I know this is not ideal for a 4 drop. I totally agree with everyone that's saying that in the comments right now. But I just, I, I would bookmark this card. I, I don't know that this is entirely useless. And finally, lands. Um, these, I'm not really sure what to call these. They are reminiscent of the buddy lands in some ways. They check to see if you just have two basic lands and not just one of, of two different types. Um, so this will obviously, everyone's going to be playing more basic lands, but that's cool because they totally work very well with fetches. A very good synergy with fetches these have. So these are going to be staple cards, I would say. I'm not incredibly impressed, you know. I might just rather play temples, but that being said, these, th there are many situations these are going to come into play untapped and be awesome. So it's kind of a toss-up in a lot of ways. I'd rather scry, but I'd also rather have the land come into play untapped. So these are absolutely format staples. Just no, no denying. They're guaranteed to be format staples. We will be playing them. But that also means we'll be playing probably a few more basic lands than we have been playing in decks. And finally, shock lands. <laughs> yeah, crazy, full art, Eldrazi bordered shock lands with the prettiest art I've ever seen on these two. Um, I do want to make very clear, these will not be standard playable, uh, which is a huge bummer. When I first saw these, I just smiled and smiled. They got bigger and bigger, and I was like, it's happening. I can't believe it's happening. Um, but it turns out that these, not standard playable. These will be super expensive, guaranteed. These will be the uh, most expensive iterations of the Shocklands, especially maybe once the set rotates out and has a couple of years to cool off, you know. These will end up being incredibly expensive, the definitive versions of the Shocklands. So if you get them, hold on to them because they're very, very important in nearly every format. Every format you can play them indefinitely, they are important. Um, and they will be worth 
a butt ton of money at some point in the future. So this is actually super, super exciting for investors. And even for players that want to break into modern, you can now um, lower the cost of entry into modern. Well, I think we've covered it all so far. Spoilers are going to start rolling in really fast here. So we've only got about a month until the set releases. So we're going to start seeing spoilers quick. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come at a very, very fast pace at this point. But stick with us. We've got a lot of spoilers coming up. And again, decks. Um, which we'll talk about later. I'm gonna gonna be releasing the deck tech tomorrow. Don't worry, it's coming up. I know this takes away from the deck techs, but really had to get all of this out because I'm excited about like 80% of it. So let me know how you feel about these, what, what you're most excited for, and I'll catch you guys later with more MTG stuff. <laughs> like, share, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I hope you did. I, I have a feeling you did. I certainly did. I enjoyed the hell out of myself. So I'll see you guys later. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.